Okay. 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 Is it is it coming now? Ah, I have selected. So hope my now I am audible, correct? Okay. So anyway, uh, due to this, because first time to set up the uh, streaming, it took time. But anyway, I will cover it within the stipulated time okay so welcome to all on behalf of pantech e-learning i uh, welcome and congratulate to you all in this course so main aim of this course is to understand the thing apart from the academics i focused mainly to apply it in some practical application and mainly my all teaching approach is towards physical implementation whatever we read in the book if we can make it and see in in front of us then it will be much more uh, enjoyable okay so i'll i'll try to i'll try to make you the concept clear uh, time to time even though today is very uh, basic introductory class but these conceptions are very much important to uh, do the proper control of motors okay so this this is the first class so this will be on the basics of induction motor why I am in, I have included that induction motor if you see if you take the statistics of uh, prime mover prime mover means which is rotating some uh, driven equipment like centrifugal fan pump etc etc uh, before 1970s so the field of prime movers are dominated by dc machines because when your motor is connected with some pump or some fan or something like that blower definitely you need to control the speed <coughs> okay so another problem is there i will give you one example say you can take the combustion engines you can consider our scooter or bike or something like that those are combustion engines so if my road is very smooth that means where the torque requirement is less you can ride the bike in fifth gear okay so gear is basically for what to adjust the mechanical advantage your uh, machine your motor shaft is not directly connected with the uh, wheel in between some gears are there which we can adjust based on our torque requirement say if the road is very smooth we can ride our bike in uh, fourth or fifth gear but if the road is inclined or bumpy where the torque requirement is very high in such place we cannot uh, drive our uh, bike in fifth gear definitely we have to 
come down to second or third or first gear something like that because uh, the torque requirement is high so the the power the power basically is proportional to the torque the product of torque and rpm okay so if eventually if if we increase the uh, uh, let me take one pen so basically the power power is proportional to the product of torque and rpm so power is always constant so torque is proportional to torque is inversely proportional to the rpm this is universally true because your energy cannot be changed correct so that's why in combustion engines what is happening it's always it cap it is capable to deliver the full power but uh, if you need more torque your rpm should be reduced okay and vice versa but some of the cases where i need full torque in any rpm a power maybe power the capability power capability is there but i can uh, use it as per my requirement okay that is not possible in combustion engines that is possible in electrical rotating machines so electrical rotating machine is such a prime over where at any rpm any rpm machine will be capable to deliver the full torque we can do it by proper control so in this when this kind of requirements are there so people started to use that electrical rotating machine and to cater this purpose dc machines were dominating in the field that the speed controls are involved till late 70s or 80s but the problem is in dc machine there will be some brush and commutator all these things it will be there slipping will be there okay which when the when the power is high so the current will be transferring through the sliding contact so at the flashover may take place due to this reason it cannot be operated in hazardous area so you can't find any uh, dc rotating machine in refinery in nuclear fields where the where the hazard is a problem or chemical industry because if that spark creates some hazard it will cause a huge fatality so that is not advisable so to overcome this issue when the induction motor is evolved and today if you take the statistics of process and power industry more than 95% of the prime mover of power and process industries are induction motor especially asynchronous scurial cage induction motor and even though in electric vehicle people are thinking or some companies they started to use the induction motor because it is maintenance what are the advantage of electrical uh, uh, asynchronous induction machine it is maintenance free okay it is robust it is economic it is cost effective it can operate in hazardous area like refinery so everywhere when the some advantages are there definitely some disadvantage will be there what are those disadvantage 
the disadvantage is the control is not so easy when i want to operate this machine in an decoupled manner decoupled manner means as i told the torque and rpm are very tightly coupled but if i want to control the torque and rpm individually that is called decoupled control this is not so easy you can take one example our ceiling fan okay what is happening there the electrical energy is converting to mechanical domain the electrical energy it is delivering to the fan is current and voltage and the output from the fan it is coming torque and rpm for our ceiling fan it's a class 4 power supply the terminal voltage is fixed which is which is 230 volt now i can tell this current whatever say for us for a certain certain instant the fan is drawing a current of 2 ampere this 2 ampere is responsible to produce torque and rpm now can i can i can anybody tell very quickly that from this 2 ampere how much ampere is going to produce torque and how much ampere is going to produce rpm it's not so easy in case of induction motor in case of uh, asynchronous in induction motor or any induction motor because the rotor is getting induced it getting magnetized by electromagnetic induction and the position of that rotor flux is not so easy to predict so basically this current will be the vector sum of these two uh, current component so unless otherwise i can estimate that i cannot control the motor in an isolated manner so we have to use some estimation or some complex calculations we have to solve some differential equations that will come slowly i will make this concept very clear and i will give you the approach to uh, implement it also i will i will uh, give you a glimpse to write the code also so that you can you can do it okay so due to this reason even though there are lots of advantage in induction motor but this control aspect become slight um, difficult it it becomes a difficult task for the control engineers okay this is very even though so many people may be knowing but i always start from the root level so that the conception when when i am telling something if you close your eyes you can visualize that the flux is rotating like this like this so i can i want to clear it clear the concept to everybody so maybe somebody knowing all these things but please excuse me because i started from the i always used to start from the basic <clears throat> an induction motor or asynchronous motor why this name asynchronous asynchronous is the opposite of synchronous that means the magnetic field inside the stator space the speed of rotating magnetic field is always higher than the mechanical speed or the uh, rotating speed of the rotor flux <coughs> it's never able to catch that why because the rotor is getting magnetized due to this induction so first it will rotor will become magnet then that magnet will, will follow the rotating magnetic field so there will be some delay so that's why it's called asynchronous motor okay which the electric current in the rotor needed to produce torque is obtained by electromagnetic induction from the magnetic field of the stator winding 
An induction motor can therefore be made without electrical connection to the rotor. It's a great advantage. You need not to connect anything, any electrical supply to the rotor. But in case of DC machine or uh, separately excited DC machine or anything, any kind of DC machines, you need to give some excitation to the rotor to become it magnet, which is not at all required to for an induction machine. Construction become much more simply simplified. The rotor can be either uh, squirrel cage type or one type, but most of the people they will prefer today the squirrel cage type due to its construction simplicity and its cost effectiveness. So as you know, this is the cross-sectional view of the motor. I will I will explain later for this cooling because cooling is a when you are working in electrical engineering field or power electronics the cooling the heat evacuation is a big task you need not to limit your knowledge only to that electrical engineering you should have some knowledge for heat evacuation the mode of heat transfer how it is to be evacuated how to enhance the cooling all these things you have to consider when you are in industry otherwise your machine will be not that much effective that i will explain in the subsequent lectures so this is the driving end where the driven equipment is connected and this side is called non-driving end these are the nomenclature and you know these are the terminal block or the terminal a box this is your this is the enclosure here these fins are provided because that fan the centrifugal fan will blow the air through this and the convective heat transfer coefficient which is called h that is directly proportional to flow so if you increase the flow your heat evacuation will be augmented so due to this another things this convective heat transfer is depend on the surface area so that's why this fin is provided to extend the surface area which is called extended surface heat transfer those are the constructional features of the machine i will give you because this is a uh, I, I learned this subject from my teacher, uh, you may be knowing, so he told that this motor control is an endless subject, all branches of engineering are involved here, it is an ocean, but I will try to give you a glimpse in this lecture series. So this is the rotor, as I told, so it is a squirrel case rotor. This is called, these are the end rings, it is a short circuit ring because the rotor bars, these are the rotor core and inside the rotor bars will be there, I will give you, you see these are the rotor bars, some extruded part, okay. So these are the short circuited, the rotor bars are short circuited through short circuit ring or sometimes it is called SC ring. Okay. <clears throat> and these are the motor which is horizontally, the shaft is horizontal. Some things are vertical, this is called flange, that is called flange mounted motor. I will tell you all this variant time to time, whenever it is required. So these are the general construction, you are all are familiar okay now uh, the concept of rotating magnetic field i will i will explain you pictorically you need not to go for any deep calculations and all that we will come later say this black color is a wooden thin wooden plate this is a ferromagnetic material and this is a 
permanent magnet now if you put like this and if you move this magnet like this or like that then this ferromagnetic material piece also will try to follow the position of the moving magnet correct so this is the concept of linear machines okay simply if we can the launching device today they are using or that uh, that uh, what is called that uh, high speed trains all they are using this kind of concept linearly moving electric field if you able to make then naturally the ferromagnetic material will get magnetized and it will try to follow that uh, moving moving electromagnetic path the same way if i can able to uh, if i can able to make a magnetic field which is rotating cylindrically and inside if i able to put one magnet then this magnet will try to follow that same field basically this is motor if you can able to do by some uh, construction if you can able to do that that is called motor simply so say this here lot of poles are there lot of poles are there this also having some pole so if you can give a rotating if you can create a rotating field then the rotor will definitely will follow that rotating field and with that if you connect your driven equipment it will become a motor now the question how it is so to understand that thing prior to understand that thing let us recall the vector addition of parallelogram law <coughs> So if P is a vector and Q is another vector, vector means it having the magnitude and the uh, absolute value both direction as well as the absolute value. So now this is your P vector, this is your Q vector. With this two, you complete a parallelogram and draw the result and uh, draw the diagonal of that. The diagonal the length of the diagonal will it will give the absolute value of the vector and this is the angle at which this vector will work mathematically also you can find out those values but I am not going today on those details this concept is required how by the virtue of three phase current the automatic rotating magnetic field is generated we have taken three positions here you know these are the uh, that uh, uh, phase one that means r phase two y phase three b so we are taking three positions a b and c so for my calculation simplicity i am considering this point is half of the full magnitude and this is the full magnitude this is positive side and this is negative side okay and this is r this is y this is b In three phase system, the angles are 120. This is 120, this is 120, and this is also 120. So now for the position A, the value position A means here. This line, this vertical line. The value of phase one, which is half. Value of phase two, it is here. That is negative full. So it is this is the positive side so this will be negative side means this entire length is double of this 
then the phase b which is half that means like this now if i draw the resultant of all those three so these are two vectors so i have to make the parallelogram and this will be the resultant so now if you take the resultant of these three vectors it will come something like this okay now i am going to point b in point b the value of phase one it is full so this is a, this one and the value of phase two and three it is negative and half so this is negative and half of that this is also negative and half of that if i draw the resultant it is like this okay so in position a the resultant vector position was like this okay and now the resultant will be like this that means it will be like this you see now the position is changed when the when the electrical signal timing change from a to b the resultant flux of the stator space is moved with the angle theta or theta 1 now let us understand the point c so in point c the phase 1 the phase 1 <coughs> and phase 2 is half and positive so phase 1 and phase 2 half and positive and phase 3 it is negative so this now if i take the resultant of this 3 it is like this so now for a position it was like this for b position the resultant is moved with an angle theta 1 and for c position now it is like this it's moved with an angle theta 2 so if you complete the 360 in this way you will be seeing these things are repeating it is rotating rotating now you can understand if i able to create some magnet with some pole and if i apply this three phase and all the poles should be aparted by 120 degree if these things i can maintain just you apply the current uh, apply the voltage or current automatically in the in the spherical coordinate in the spherical stator space sorry in the cylindrical space the rotating magnetic field will be rotating with the speed which is called synchronous speed okay which is called synchronous speed now inside the stator space if i will to put some other magnet which can which is called rotor then the rotor will start to follow uh, the uh, stator uh, 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 rotating magnetic field this is basically motor okay so here the all the positions are shown so here in this position it is like this in this position it's rotate so basically the rotor the magnetic field rotating in this direction okay now if suppose this is rotating like this now if this phase sequence means in place of blue line if you if if blue line is transferred by red line and red line in, is transferred by blue line or any two phases are altered it will start to rotate like this which is called phase sequence with that you can control the direction of the motor okay so this is uh, today if you want to design the machine earlier people used to 
do the calculations and all and nowadays so many uh, tools are available finite element modeling so here in this in this link this one small simulations are available in my channel if you are interested you can see that so you can see by simulation i don't know why it is not i can't play it i don't know this is made in comsol i'm sorry i am not able to play it that uh, that play button is not coming yeah it is rotating you see it is sorry previous yeah. i don't know again i cannot play what happened i don't know okay so here you see based on the position of the poles and its winding the direction of the current flow you can control the speed that is basically the construction that is not the design is not the design of induction motor is not included in this course it will be talking only about the control but i am I'm, I'm just giving you a glimpse so that um, sometimes the concept of this uh, things are all required so that you can understand it again it's a very simple concept in in you just recall our childhood we used to play with electromagnet as a piece of iron and some uh, insulated wire and one battery <coughs> so if you connect like this and if you put your hand like this and if this is the direction of current flow so here the north pole will be created and here the south pole will be created these are the from this basic concept only motor is working so now you see if i if this is ac power and if i wound this and these are the cores these are the core stator core and if 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 i connect the this is the phase this is the phase and this is the neutral if i connect this so this kind of pole will be created and it will be altered we will be seeing it how it is how it is happening now at what speed the the machine will the stator flux will rotate so say this is a single is a see this is a single pole pair at this position the magnitude of the current is maximum and say this is the north pole and this is the south pole and when it has come to this position the magnitude reduced this much so this the length of the magnet is shrinked down and at this position the magnitude is zero so the north and south pole are coincided and when it is coming this position it is magnitude magnitude is same as this position but it is in opposite direction so the south pole is become gone here and north pole is here and here just you are getting the one 180 degree rotation of this of the initial position so from this we can understand so this total is total these things is the period of t so this length it is t by 2 so within t by 2 time interval the magnet rotated 180 degree 
so for full rotation means for 360 degree rotation it need the total time that means once the period is completed the two pole magnet rotated uh, one full rotation so number of rotation of 60 second is 60 by t for t is for full rotation so per unit time rotation is 1 by t so for 60 second it will be 60 by t and t time period is equal to inverse of the frequency so 1 by t is equal to 60 f now i am multiplying both side by both numerator and denominator by 2 so 120 f by 2 so here the number of poles are 2 which i substituted by p so the rotation the synchronous speed is 120 into supply frequency by pole pair or uh, sorry by number of poles now we can consider the same thing for four pole okay sorry so this is for this position this is for this position and so on similarly so this uh, if you this you can take north and south pole and here we are considering four pole so slowly slowly so if see, this is north north south south so here it is magnitude is maximum and here it is so it is started to shrinking here all the four poles are coincided because your magnitude is zero then here it is in opposite you see this is replaced by south pole and this is repla replaced by uh, north uh, north pole and once it is coming this position you see this point here correct so that means you can you see you, if you can take this picture and take this picture so a 90 degree rotation is obtained here so in four pole system with the time t by 2 the 90 degree rotation is completed so for full rotation because 360 degree if you want to rotate you have to multiply by 4 so it is 2t time 2 periods it will take for full rotation hmm? so the number of rotation in 60 second is 60 by 2t which is nothing but 60 f by 2 and the synchronous speed is if you again multiply numerator and denominator by 2 so it is 120 f by 4 which is 120 f by number of poles okay so today we will terminate here here in today's class i have just given a glimpse of the motor okay and today as it is it is a it is the first class i should not i should not burden you with mathematics and all these things so that's why i uh, started these things with pictorically and hope now the concept of induction motor and how it is rotating why it is rotating why the synchronous speed is 120 f by p all these things you are able to understand uh, pictorially if you close your eyes you can think that the magnet is that the resultant flux is rotating like this stepwise and it is creating the rotating magnetic field and the speed which is rotating is such and such so hope this will be useful to you so i am closing the ppt
and now you can any question or something i don't know so now So shall I uh, terminate the session now? No, no, I will, I will, I will, who are confused, I will make it comfortable for you all. Don't worry, it's not difficult. So that purpose of certificate and all that you can uh, discuss with the uh, with Mr. Malayappan, I think you will be all you will be getting certificate. Yeah, as I told, the the synchronous machine. In case of synchronous machine, the rotor is a permanent magnet or a electromagnet. So if it is like that then automatically it will it will able to catch so as as i was telling um, uh, if if the rotor is first getting magnetized say you can take one example if i bring the raw chicken and i have to make the tandoor and i have to eat there will be some delay but uh, if if i get a ready-made tandoori chicken after coming in home itself i can start to eat so the rotor will follow the magnetic field once it is getting magnetized so this to get magnetized there is a delay after that only start start to rotate so it will never able to catch the speed of the uh, 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 rotating magnetic field of the uh, stator space okay how it is happening once can i get the recording of this live session yeah that that i can't i don't know because i am not that much familiar uh, with that uh, youtube live and all tell about tell us about internship so join in whatsapp group it's full actually this uh, this i you should talk to uh, mr malayappan don't know hindi okay i am not speaking in hindi so uh, uh, mr malayappan you can answer that whether this is it is recorded and it it can be uh, you can get it or not some people are asking yeah in embedded system also it is planned so uh, that i will discuss with mr malayappan and uh, it will be taken up for power electronics and iot application so that you can control the device through uh, using python and android device and the application of microcontroller for uh, power electronics and control one portion will be on power electronics another portion will be for control <clears throat> yeah 
I know Hindi, but I know Hindi, but I don't know whether uh, I can speak better in Hindi. Yeah, we will write the, we will use the Arduino ID, but we will not use the library. See, uh, for uh, customized application, you cannot use any library. You have to go for registered level coding. See, if you learn, say, if you, if you, if you write those kind of, if you use those kind of library, your knowledge will be limited. You cannot use it for, say, if I only know the uh, Calpol or Septron. We know that Calpol and, and Septron, that is, that will be used for fever. But, but if I know the composition, name of the composition, that means it is paracetamol, then I can use it in 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 uh, different aspect if i know the biochemistry of the body and the function of paracetamol then i can uh, my concept is very clear so like that if we use the library you can only do for some uh, specific purpose but if you know the if you know the uh, register then it will be much more useful do we use any software tool for controlling motor i'm not getting a tool for software control i will give you a glimpse uh, this is also in the in the class uh, you can make your own control or there is a commercially available things which is called uh, vfd drive simulation of closed loop control yeah that will be there closed loop control not only for vyf it should be vyf is the scalar control uh, is it possible to get the ppt yeah definitely you can get but how to share i don't know that you can talk to mr malayappan I confuse my time zone in GMT. I don't know whether it will be GMT or IST. Yeah, that's why I am speaking in English only. Oh, Tamil, I don't, I can manage, but my Tamil is very bad. Flux and current voltage relation yeah that i will explain this is this i will explain when i will be explaining the uh, speed torque characteristics of the machine yeah that's why i'm told this uh, induction induction motor having lot of advantages by SCADA. SCADA means you mean to say the supervisory control and data acquisition system. My channel name that how I, I can't type it. that i will share it to mr malayappan you can connect you can collect from there google meet but uh, here uh, it cannot go live i don't know that i can't tell all these things this will be decided by mr malayappan is induction motor drive better for yeah 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 definitely that that part is there my channel name i can't type it chat reply live chat reply 
रुको आई विल आई विल ट्राई ये मेरा माय पीसी इज इफ इफ यू सर्च देयर दिस इज माय नेम एंड हियर दिस इज द स्पेलिंग एस आई टी ए एन जी एस एच यू एस ई के एच ए आर बी आई एस डब्ल्यू एस सो विद दैट यू कैन सर्च एंड द फर्स्ट थिंग इट विल कम देयर दिस इज माय चैनल okay uh, uh, so shall i uh, terminate the session yeah that 12 day, day syllabus it is available with while you are logging in for registration form there it is there anyway from the basic to till the industrial application any tamil class available for uh, this course i that i don't know so this how bldc control work yeah that i i i explain yeah i am bengali i am from uh, calcutta <coughs> okay so thanks a lot thanks for your patience so we'll see tomorrow